Sujinshan Atlas, a comet that approaches the Earth every 80,000 years. It can be seen currently in the sky. Unfortunately, I can't see it from my location due to heavy rains and clouds. So I had only two options. Either be alive for another 80,000 years, which I assume is a bit difficult, therefore I decided to go with option 2. Create a sky shader with the comet. For the tutorial, I will be using Godot 4.3, but it can also work on Redot. Now just to be clear, I support every single game engine and framework, even if I may not support the corporation behind it. That sounds pretty controversial. Anyway, let's get started. First, let's create a shader. Make sure you select the mode sky. Then I will create a material. Assign the shader to the material. In the scene, add a world environment node. Then expand this environment. In the sky section, expand the sky resource and in the sky material slot, assign our material. Now to draw anything procedurally, I need UVs. In the sky processor, I don't have UVs, but I have eye direction, which is a vector 3 that aligns with our world's XYZ axis. So for the UVs, I will use the XY components of eye direction. In the star field video, I've used fraction function to draw stars. Let me just visualize it. I will have this sort of grid. This means I would have multiple comets. I only want one, so I will just clamp this between 0 to 1. Then I want the origin of UV at the middle of the squares, so I will subtract 0 0.5. And now I have origin here, which might look a bit weird, but it will work for my use case. Alright, now that I have the UVs, let's draw a trail first. Length function will give me the length of a vector. It will be 0 at the origin and will get bigger as we move away. Then visualize the trail instead. And it is just a fading black circle. I want the inverse of that so I will simply go 1 minus of length. Now this trail can go negative so I will use absolute function. Absolute function returns the unsigned values. And now I will have a black ring basically which you can't see right now because the UVs only goes from 0 to 1. So let's multiply some bigger number here. Then I can squash this ring by passing some bigger value in the X component. Now this is just two curved lines. But if I offset it in the Y axis, it would look like this. Then I want white part instead of black and I want to have some more control so I would use smooth step. Here, since edge 0 is greater than edge 1, smooth step will return 0 if the trail is greater than edge 0, returns 1 if the trail is less than edge 1, and values between the edges will be interpolated using Hermit interpolation. And I will have this arc. Now I want a bit more gap here, so here I will just increase the y. Then I want to fade out the trail from the top, so I can use another smooth step. Okay, now I only want this part and not this. So I can change the offset a bit. And now the trail is mirrored on the opposite side. I don't want that so I can multiply idirection.z here. idirection.z is positive this side and negative this side. So at the left side I will have negative values. Which will screw up other elements of the skybox so let's clamp it to zero. And to clamp values with only one bound, you can use min and max functions. For this case, I only have to clamp to lower bound, meaning I only want to clamp the trail so that it won't go less than zero. Therefore, I will use max function. And max function simply returns the maximum value between these two. Okay, that's our trail done. Now, let's say I don't want the trail here. I want it near the horizon. I could shift the UVs, but it will be limited. I want more control, so I will rotate the entire i direction vector. So first let's create a function that returns a 2x2 two two rotation matrix. 
then it will take radians as the input then here just return the 2 by 2 matrix and matrices in Godot are in column major orders so this will be the first column and this will be the second one I've covered rotation matrix in my rotate UV video if you're interested it is just cosine of radians minus sine of radians sine of radians and cosine of radians then in the sky processor let's store the i direction in a new variable then let's use our i variable instead then i want the trails near horizon so i need to rotate around x-axis therefore i will go i dot y z just remember to use other two components so if you want to rotate around z axis you would write i dot x y all right then go matrix first so rotation let's rotate it to minus 0.1 and multiply over i dot y z let's further bring it near horizon so two three yep three then the comet will be brighter at the bottom for that i will again use the length function then let's visualize core as well so and i have the core here now i can invert this as well but there's a better way to create glowing things simply divide some smaller number with the length then here i've offset the uvs with 0.5 so here i will also do that to bring the core to the trail base now if you're wondering why i haven't directly used the uv here good catch but i've clamped the uv between 0 to 1 so i will get the seam at the corner see this now let me bring the core a bit upward so and also make it a bit smaller nice but just like the trails i have the reflection of the core on the opposite side so simply core multiply equals maximum of i dot z and zero then i want to control this fade i can use power function but i want more control so i will use smooth step instead pretty cool now you might not want your comet to be pure white so let's color it for that i will use a gradient texture let's declare a sampler 2d uniform in the inspector you will have this texture slot select the new gradient texture 1d and assign the colors of your liking Then here let's sample the texture then as uv i will pass i dot y and for the 1d gradient texture second component doesn't matter so i will again pass y and take the rgb channels and multiply our trail and core as a final touch let's distort this trail there are a bunch of ways to distort things in shaderland i will use a sine wave sine waves uniformly goes from minus one to one but I picked up a nice trick to get irregular waves by going sine of x plus sine of x plus sine of x like this. So before the trail calculation, let's use that trick. Then I will multiply the entire thing with some smaller value to dial down the wave strength. And here you can pass any numbers, just make sure they are not direct multiples of each other. Then to distort the UVs, I will use the mix function. Mix function linearly interpolates between the values based on this third input. If I pass 0, I will get UV. If I pass 1, I will get the distortion. And for any value between 0 to 1, I will get the interpolated value. Now I can't even see the trail, but I will fix that in a minute. But I don't want to distort the trail base, only want to distort the top part. For that I can simply multiply u is y here. But I want more control over where distortion should start, so I will again use smooth step. Now I don't think the trail of the comet moves or wave. But I'm taking artistic liberty here and subtract time here. And the trails will wave ever so slightly. 
Now you can use this code and add it on top of any of your other sky shaders. Let me quickly show you how. Let's put this entire thing in its separate function. I will create a new function here and paste the code here. I'm getting this unknown identifier error because I cannot access the I direction outside the sky processor. No issues, I will grab it in the parameters. So back 3 i and get rid of this line. Then here simply return the result. In the sky processor, simply go color equals let's call our function comment and pass in i direction. And that shouldn't change anything. Then for the demonstration, I will just use this HDRI image. So create new sampler 2D uniform. In the inspector, assign the image in the texture slot. Then in the sky processor, let's sample the texture. Then to sample the texture, use sky coordinates and take RGB components. Sky coordinates are polar coordinates, by the way. Then here, instead of equals, simply go plus equals. Now I cannot see the comet properly, so I will just reduce the exposure by multiplying some smaller value here. And you have a comet in the sky. Awesome. By the way, as you can see, I've used a bunch of smooth steps, which is a nice tool to have in your shader utility belt. You should know the smooth step function inside out, which I've explained in this video. Check it out and I will see you there.